pH of salts. What would you expect the pH of an acid to be? Well, I hope your answer would be that the pH of an acid would be less than 7. And the more powerful it is, or the, the more acidic it is, the smaller the number. Likewise with an alkali. Alkalis have a pH greater than 7. And salt, pH equals 7? Well, not necessarily. That's what makes this a little bit of a mystery. Because some salts are neutral, but some salts can be acid, and some salts can be alkali. It's a bit of a surprise. Salts can be acid, alkali, or neutral. It just depends. What does it depend on? Well, it depends on the acid and alkali they're made from. You see, we need to ask the question, what is a salt? And one way to think of a salt is to see it as the product of the reaction between an acid and an alkali. When an acid and an alkali react, they produce a salt plus water. But there are different possible permutations. For example, if the acid is strong and the alkali is also strong, then these two effectively cancel each other out and the salt will be neutral. Tell you what you'd expect. But other combinations exist. If the acid was strong but the alkali was weak, then we kind of intuitively feel that the strong acid and weak alkali will produce a salt which is maybe slightly acidic. And that's the case. Here's what's causing some salts to be acidic. It depends on the nature of the acid and the alkali. And of course the other way around is if the acid is weak and the alkali is strong, not too surprising to discover the salt is alkali. Now we're going to make something absolutely clear. Salts only reveal the true nature in water. Only when the salt is dissolved does this phenomenon come about. And we'll see the reason why later. Water plays a, a crucial part in all of this. Let's go back to this. Acid, alkali. We need to remind ourselves. Strong acid. Strong acid. Hydrochloric acid. Sulfuric acid. Nitric acid. Strong. Weak acid, carbonic acid, sulfurous acid, and ethanoic acid, the carboxylic acids like ethanoic acid, are weak, strong, weak. How about alkalis? Can you remember the strong alkalis? Well, basically the ones made from alkali metals, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. The only weak alkali you're expected to know is ammonia. Ammonia forms ammonium hydroxide. It's the only weak alkali you're likely to come across. So let's go back to this. Let's take a particular salt and try and work out what category it falls into. How about a salt such as, say, ammonium chloride? If you took ammonium chloride and dissolved it in water, you'd find it would be... Well, let's work it out. Ammonium comes from ammonium hydroxide, which is a weak alkali. Whereas the chloride comes from hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. So applying our, our simple rule that we came up with uh, earlier on, we can work out if the alkali is weak and the acid is strong, this salt is acidic. But that's not an explanation, it's just a rough guide. Why? What we need to ask ourselves is, what's this actually doing to the water? How can this be an acid? Remember, to be an acid, there has to be hydrogen ions, an excess of hydrogen ions. What's really going on is that this is affecting the water. You see, water is neutral. Although water contains hydrogen ions, which you associate with acids, and it contains hydroxide ions, which of course are responsible for alkali, so long as these are equal, water will be neutral. Water is neutral when these cancel each other out. But, and this is what it's all about, certain salts when put into water upset the neutrality. For example, Let's suppose you had a salt which effectively removed hydrogen ions. 
If we had a salt which, when it went into, into water and moved hydrogen ions, we'd be left with an alkali. It's not so much the salt that's the alkali, it's what it's doing to the water. Likewise, if we had a salt which removed hydroxide ions, and some salts can do that, we'd be left with an acid. If we have a salt which does neither, certain salts don't affect the hydrogen or hydroxide ions, the water is left alone and it's neutral. So why is ammonium chloride acidic? It must be acidic because somehow this salt is leaving these in the water, it must be removing those. So this reach a question, why is this salt able to remove hydroxide ions? Ammonium chloride removes hydroxide ions. Well here's the, the whole story. If you take ammonium chloride and you add it to water, it just dissolves, it disintegrates, the lattice breaks up. It breaks up to form ammonium ions and chloride ions. There's the water that the salt is dissolved in. The water ionizes, but mind you, only a little bit. It forms a handful of hydroxide ions and, a, and very few hydrogen ions. So you have to picture the scene, you have to visualize this ammonium chloride in a beaker of water. Ammonium chloride sitting in water. Are there any interactions going on? Will, for example, will these ions join together? Will the hydrogen ions and chloride ions join together? Well, let's ask yourself, if they did, what would we get? If you join these together, you would get HCl. What do you think of when you see that? Well, you think hydrochloric acid. And you should, should think, ah, that is strong. You have to say, well, what does that mean? It means fully ionized. Hydrochloric acid doesn't have ions which want to join. They want to dissociate. They want to split apart. So these ions will not join together. This is not going to happen at all. These ions just carry on independent of each other. Well, these ions join together. Well, what would you get if they did? If these ions were to join together, we'd end up with ammonium hydroxide, which we should know is weak. It's a weak alkali. What does that mean? It means it only partially ionizes. It means that the only a little bit of it breaks up. So the question, will these join together? The answer is yes, they will. Large numbers of these ions will join together. In fact, very few of them will remain split apart. You see the consequence? The hydrogen ions are not being removed, the hydroxide ions are being removed, and if you take out the hydroxide ions, we're left with an acid. But that's not quite the whole story. Because what the water does is the water responds. The water, if you if you're late, realizing these hydroxides have been removed, responds by trying to replace them. And in trying to replace the hydroxides, even more of these hydrogen ions are produced, making the solution noticeably acidic. So let's go back again. It's a surprise to discover that some salts are not neutral. It's down to the fact that a salt is made from an acid and an alkali and the strength of the acid and alkali matter. If we take a salt like ammonium chloride, we can quickly work out if it will be acid, alkali, neutral. We simply look at the salt and we look at what it's made from. This is made from a strong acid and a weak alkali, strong acid, acidic salt. Why is it acidic? It's because of what it does to the water. If it's acidic, it's, it's creating an excess of hydrogen ions. It's removing hydroxides. But why is it removing hydroxides? Here's why. Because in solution, ammonium ions combine with hydroxide ions, and hydroxide is removed, whereas the chloride does not join with hydrogen. These are removed, these are not. That's why we end up with an acid salt.